Again, welcome to Data Science course. This is Introduction to Big Data Analytics and Lecture 3. So our main objective today is to go through what is a big data. Also identify the four business drivers for advanced analytics. Distinguish the techniques for business intelligence from data science. Describe the role of data scientists within the new big data ecosystem. So we start with the definition of big data. Normally we say big data consists of at least three Vs. The volume of the data, very high. Variety, a very large variety of data. Variety means data from different sources may have different formatting and different data structure. And the last is the velocity. The speed of generating the data is very fast, live stream data, etc. So here, yeah, big data is a data whose scale, distribution, and diversity. So scale will be based on the volume, and diversity can be will be the variety, and also distribution, and also the timeliness require the use of a new technical architecture. Now we already know about data mining uh, pattern recognition system, when we are dealing with a, a moderate size of data, we can, especially data that can fit in a memory, we can easily analyze the data in a memory, a very not too large set of data. Now, when we have a big data here, we are talking about data that cannot even fit in a memory. So we have to analyze this data from a story device, maybe in a, in a database system stored. So we may have to use the new techniques and also to improve the speed processing. Maybe we have to use the techniques of, for example, can be distributive computer system. And one of the techniques that works very good is the Hadoop, Hadoop and also map reduce programming concepts, uh, which bring the concept of distributing system, distributing computing cost concepts. So big data also require new data architecture, analytical sandboxes, new tools, new analytic methods, and also integrating multiple skills into one row of data scientists. And here we see organizations also, also are deriving business benefit from analyzing ever larger and more complex data set that increases require real time or near real time capabilities. One of these examples will be analyzing a stock data, uh, stock market say, uh, process trading is going on live. We can analyze this data live streaming or genetic data set like protein, DNA data set. This is a large data set to be analyzed. So as we said earlier, the key characteristics of big data is the data volume, very high volume, the processing complexity, that is the velocity, changing the data structure, also use cases warranty additional transformation and also analytical techniques. Data structure, the different variety, and different formatting of the data. So here we have the pyramid of the concept here. A big data characteristics and the data structures and data growth is increasingly unstructured. So we have four different forms of different. The best data which we can normally use uh, a conventional data analysis uh, algorithm is structured. When a data is structured, it means this data can be in a relational database system where we have tables, rows, and columns. A very good example. Or here we see a transaction data. This transaction data can be saved again in a database system. So a data, a structured data is a data contain a defined data type, the format, and also the structure. In relational database, again, each column, the field, we have to have the data type. A name maybe will be a string. A balance of account can be dollars or integer numbers, etc. 
We also have a semi-structured data types. Uh, here the data are partly structured and partly not structured. So the testacea, so again, the semi-structures uh, concept is that the data is partly, um, partly structured and partly not structured. So here we say a Tesla data files with a discernible pattern, enable passing. A very good example would be SML data files that I guess self describing and defined by an SML schema. And we also have the quantity structured. This would be a Tesla data with erratic data format. It can be formatted with effort, tools, and time. So as we can see, as the pyramid goes down and the data become more unstructured. So the last one is unstructured. Unstructured means the data has no any inherent structure and it's usually stored at, as different types of files. Example can be image files, test document, PDF, videos, etc. So the more structure we can see the arrow, the more structures at the top. So well structured, semi-structured, partly, then quantity structured and all structures. So this again, the four different types of uh, data structures. So four main types of data structures. We said the structured data we can see uh, it looks like a table. This is a relational database, a relational database. So we have rows and columns, highly structured. All the fields have their own data type and uh, the unit, everything were structured. The semi-structured example here is more or less like MSML. So we can write our own tag, the SML format. We can see here it's, it's a tag. So it's partly structured, partly not structured. Then we have the quantity data, uh, quantity structured data. Then unstructured can be video, image, etc. So here we talk about the data repositories and analysis perspective. Uh, here we say data highlands, uh, isolated data modes. Again, data warehouse is when we have a large historical data of an organization, maybe since the starting of business, maybe 10, 20 years, all this, this data are stored in a data warehouse. Now, a data mod will be part of the data warehouse. So we may have a, a data that is stored is only by a customer or it's only by an employee or specific subject, and that can be a data mod. So here we say isolated data mods, more or less like small, small islands. Here we can use a spreadsheet and low volume database for record keeping because again, it's not a large data set. Analysis de dependent on the data extracts. But data warehouse is the centralized data containers in a purpose building space. So a company may have a policy that, okay, we, we have a transaction every day, every day we generate data. This data will be in our transactional database system. Then every month or every week, we are going to transfer this data to a data warehouse where we may store it permanent. So most data analysis or data mining normally is done in the data warehouse. We, we may, a company may have a data set of 10 years operations and they want to find out the patterns or what kind of knowledge they can gain from these 10 years of the uh, business operations so that they can gain project the future. So data warehouse, of course, can su support the BI. BI stands for the business intelligence and reporting. But this data, historical data stored for many years of operation of the business organization. But we treat robust analysis. Also analysis dependent on IT and DBA stands for database administrations for data sets and schema changes. 
Analysis also must speed a significant time to get extract from multiple sources. And the next one will be the analytic samples. So this will be data assets gathered from multiple sources and technologies for analysis. This will enable high performance analytics using in-depth uh, processing, reduce costs associated with data replication into shadow file system. Also analyze own rather than DBA own. So these are the business drivers for analytics. And most of the time we know any business organization will surely generate data. So the whole concept of business drivers to analysis is again, our daily activities now is almost data driven process. So here we say current business problems provide opportunity for organizations to become more analytic and data driven. So we have the business drivers Example one will be desire to optimize business operations. So the sales, pricing, profitability, efficiency, the goal is again to optimize these operations. Also the desire to identify business risks. We can analyze a data set of a business operation for the past three years of an organization. And we may find out the risk where things went bad, where things went well profit less or gain lose etc so here example will be a customer churn fraud and also default also predict new business opportunities projection or prediction so upsell cross sell best new customers prospects example will be a business organization found out for the four year, for the past four years or five years when they increase the expenses on marketing and advertisement and advertisements on less on the TV or newspapers, they find out the revenue generated also increase. And this can be found from the data set of previous 10 years or 20 years time. Also be able to comply with laws and regulating requirements. Example, anti-money laundry, fair lending. So these are some of the few business drivers for analytics. Analytical approach for meeting business drivers. And here was the difference between business intelligence and data science. Most of the time business intelligence may use a conventional and data analysis algorithms uh, like data mining as a by data science go more detail uh, more complex algorithms more uh, yeah we are dealing with a very large data set big data so maybe uh, we may try uh, apply distributing computing concept or quantum computing uh, a concept of computing but um, technology that will make this process more optimized and efficient, and also in terms of speed, more faster. So here we say predictive analysis and data mining, typical techniques and data types. So optimization, very important. Predictive modeling, we can come up with a predictive modeling, forecasting, statistics analysis, structured or unstructured data, many types of sources, very large data set. Common question would be what if, or uh, what's the optimal scenario for our business? What will happen next? And this can be a prediction, projection. What if this trends con continue? Uh, what may happen to the company? So, Again, these are some of the data science concept. In terms of business intelligence, typical techniques and data types would be a standard and also hard hoc reporting. Using dashboards, alerts, queries, details on demise. So here we can see that it's not more technical. Data science are more technical comparing to business intelligence. 
uh, we use structured data most of the time, traditional sources, manageable data set. But data science, again, use big data. Most, most of the data even are unstructured. A common question can be what happened last quarter? How many did we sell? Where is the problem? So this is more based on generating reports, based on activity that has been done. But data science is trying to find an answer. And also dealing with a very large data set. This data can be unstructured. So more technical concepts are applied in data science than business intelligence. Now, implication of a typical architecture of a data science, and these implications can be a high value data is hard to reach and leverage. It's very hard to reach. So high value data is hard to reach and leverage. Predictive analysis and data mining activities are last in line for data. Q after prioritizing operational process. Also, data is moving in batches. And we talk about in-memory analytics. So if I'm using a software like R or SAS or SPSS or Excel, I need to load my data into a memory. But we also have other tools like a sample will be the Hadoop and Scalar, which make it best possible to again analyze the data that is in a storage device, not in a memory. Isolated ad hoc analytic projects rather than centrally managed analysis of analytics. Also opportunities for new approach to analytics. Here we have, again, dealing with a large data set. So new applications driving data volume, a very large data set. We can see from 1990s, we have terabytes to 2010s going. Now we are in exabytes. And we can see YouTube, Facebook, they, all these applications generate more data. So opportunity for new approach to analytics in terms of big data ecosystem. And we have devices available. So we have data devices, as simple as cell phone, GPS, uh, cable boxes, ATM machine. When I use ATM machine, generating data, medical images, and also data collectors, and mostly government agencies, medical <coughs> organizations uh, collect medical data from their patients. Also, the internet example can be common example can be YouTube or Facebook. And data users and buyers can be individuals, media activities, the banks, credit bureaus, uh, list brokers for retail, and the phone, TV organizations. So this would be the big data ecosystem from our data devices, what devices generate data, then who are the data collectors, and who are the data users, and also the buyers. <coughs> So consideration for big data analysis, these are the criteria for big data project, the speed of decision making, throughput, and also analysis flexibility. And also new analytical architecture, we have the sandbox, this data assets gathered from multiple sources and technology for analysis. This will enable, again, high performance analytics, and also to reduce the cost associated with data replication. There are three key roles of a new data ecosystem. The first is the deep analytic talent. Here we have the data scientists. In US, it's projected that we, we, we may need somewhere around 40,000 to 190,000 data scientists. And also we have the data savvy professionals. These are analysis and data savvy managers. And the projected US talent gap should be it's around 1.5 million.
So data scientists key activities, uh, it involve analytic, the tools and services, the infrastructure. So here we say reframe business challenges as analytic challenges, design, implement, and also deploy models, data mining techniques on big data, create insight that lead to a actionable recommendation. And data science scientists can be break into a data engineers uh, who normally prepare the data, who organize the data, make sure the data is well format structured. Then we have data analysis, then business intelligence analysis. So a profile of a data scientist, uh, we discussed this previous by uh, here again, we summarize everything. As a data scientist, you have to have the skill of quantitative analysis, the concept of mathematics, computer science, technical. Uh, you have to be very skeptical. Uh, be able to generate questions, uh, coming up with answers, communication and collaboration techniques, curiosity and be also be creativity. So big data analytics industries, these are some few examples. We have a healthcare system. Uh, this make it possible to reduce the cost of care. Public services, uh, government agencies, the example here, preventing pandemics, uh, the CDC, uh, life science, genomic mapping, uh, IT infrastructures, using unstructured data analysis, then online services, the social medias. So data collectors, as we said earlier, the main data collectors will be government agency, medical, and also the internet. Example will be Google, uh, Link, LinkedIn, actually their main work is on data. Facebook, 90% of their uh, organization resources is data. They generate their funds through data. And the healthcare, we say the situation if we have a poor police response and problem with medical care triggered by shooting of a Rajas students. And this event drove local doctor to map crime data and examine local health care. And this is again a real example that happened in New Jersey Rajas University a poor police response and problem with medical care triggered by shooting of a registered student. This event drove a local doctor to map crime data and examine the local health care. This uh, crime relate to medical quality of a medical care. Also, the use of big data, Dr. Jeffrey Brenner generated his own crime maps from a medical billing records of three hospitals. So is these two have an attribute to have any relationship? That is the crime rate with medical billing record. And the outcome here was city hospitals of use, uh, years provided expensive care low quality care also reduced the hospital cost by 56 percent by realizing that 80 percent of cities medical costs came from 13 percent of its residents mainly low, low income and elderly now offers a preventive care over the phone and or through home visit and the goal of this is to reduce the cost so the concept of data driven or data analysis, uh, mining, the goal here is trying to reduce, provide a good quality health care, but at the same time, reduce the cost. Also the public service example, a situation is a threat of global pandemics has increased exponentially. So pandemics spread at faster rate, more resistant to antibiotics. So this is our situation. The use of big data here, we can create a network of various listing ports. 
then combines data from viral discovery in the field, research in the disease hotspots and social media trends, then using big data to again make accurate prediction on the spread of new pandemics. The key outcome here is to identify the fifth form of human malaria, including its origin. Identify why the first failed to control swine flu, proposing more proactive approaches to prevent it outbreaks. In life science, the situation is Broad Institute, which is MIT and Harvard, mapping the human genome. And this was in earlier 2000, was announced by President Clinton, the Human Genome Project, where the whole gene of a human being, the DNA was able to be uh, mapped or analyzed. So here in, in 13 years, mapping 3 billion genetic basis pairs, 8 petabytes. So uh, we know every human being have up to 3 billion DNA sequence nucleotides. AGTC. Now we developed 30 plus software packages now shared publicly along with the genome, genomic data. Even the R package also have a package on analyzing genomic data. And also the outcome was using genetic mappings to identify cellular mutation causing cancer and other serious diseases innovating how genomic research informs new pharmaceutical drugs. And this field is more or less in a computational biology and bioinformatics uh, based on uh, DNA or even protein data set, we can be able to generate a uh, drug discovery, generate a new drug or discover a new drug that may have reaction or action against a gene a particular gene sequence. And the example of IT infrastructures, here we see explosion of, explosion of unstructured data required a new technology to analyze quickly and efficiently. And Doug Cotton created Hadoop to divide large processing tasks into smaller tasks across many computers using the concept of, again, compute, uh, distributive computing. Analyze social media data generated by hundreds of thousands of users. Uh, New York Times used Hadoop to transform its entire public ICAP from 1851 to 1922 into 11 million PDF files in 24 hours. And application range from social media and sentiment analysis and wartime charter and natural language process. In online services, opportunity to create social media space for professionals. Uh, use of the big data will be collect and analyze data from over 100 million users. For example, via Facebook, adding 1 million new users per week. So the key outcome here is the linking skills in maps, job recommendation recruiting. They are able to establish a diverse data scientist group as founder believes. And that's the start of big data revolution. So in summary, in this lecture, we study about what is again a big data, the definition of a big data, also the business drivers that leads to analyzing data sets and the techniques for business intelligence were distinguished from those of data science and also the role of data scientists within the big data ecosystem was described and we have some few examples in different fields from public health to government agency to online so again i wish everybody the best and see you again Thank you for watching. If you have a comment, like or subscribe. Thank you.